A great many years ago, I visited Maracaibo in Venezuela to see one of the lesser-known wonders of the world, the spectacular lightning storms that are the most fierce and constant anywhere in the world. During my travels, I met an old man, a cook, who claimed that the fast food chain El Pollo Loco was making a watered-down version of this classic Maracaiban recipe, and the proof was the yellow color. In Venezuela, the color is from fresh turmeric, but there's no such thing in northern Mexican cuisine, which is where El Pollo Loco got started. The biggest trick to this recipe is getting just the right amount of blackening. I've made this dozens of times over the last few months to try and perfect it and give you a reliable method for achieving great results in your own kitchen. Now the first step, of course, is to get the ingredients together. I've got cumin seeds, dried oregano, uh, thyme, smoked paprika, and turmeric. Now, turmeric is not used much in northern Mexican cooking or, or South American, Latin America cooking, but in uh, Oaxaca and Venezuela, you get fresh turmeric, the actual tuber. You, you don't see that in Russia, so I'm using the dried. It'll work just fine. And a nice big green dried serrano chili that I dried myself. And you know about, if you read my cookbook, you know all about the secrets of this uh, from that. Uh, I also have a couple of chilies, green chilies, that uh, a friend brought from Vietnam. I've never used these before. They're supposed to be extremely hot. Uh, I don't know, but in Russia, you're always very thankful to get any super hot chilies because they basically don't exist here. <laughs> They're not in supermarkets. Russians are not into super hot food. So uh, hopefully these will work out nicely. Uh, and I've got the garlic already cut up. So let's begin by grinding the spices. Okay, I get all the spices loaded into the uh, spice mill. I've taken the stem off of the chili. You don't really want to grind this up. You, you can, but it, it's not adding any flavor. It's just adding some weird notes. Uh, a little heaping teaspoon here of uh, coarse salt that helps for the abrasive properties. Uh, just to be sure that you understand, I'm not grinding up <laughs> the garlic and, the, and the, the fresh chilies right now. This is just the dried spices and the salt. Okay, I crushed the garlic into a bowl. I'm going to add the dark brown sugar, all the spices that were just ground, the liquid smoke, about a teaspoon, um, and a tablespoon or so of ketchup. Here's the, the green chilies that I sliced up fine. I would use uh, jalapenos if I could get them. Now the lime juice here it should make good taste. And we'll set this aside and get the chicken ready next. I have tried making this with uh, many different cuts of chicken, uh, large pieces, small pieces, uh, <laughs> uh, boneless, a bone in. I finally decided what I like best is fairly large chicken thighs that are bone in. But I did take a knife and I removed all the extra bone and, and any little chips that are on the back side. This is especially a problem in Russia because they tend to cut the chickens up with an axe and they leave little bone fragments in it. So you really have to watch here. But you then take a knife, make deep incisions. This is what you want. You want pieces that are deeply cut all the way down to the bone. Then I'll load these in and coat them well with the seasoning mix. Really, really coat them well. Now, one of the other good things about this recipe is that once you've gotten it to this point and the chicken is marinating, you can leave it in the marinade for quite a while. You could leave it in here till the next day if you wanted to. I, I wouldn't go much further than that because then the chicken starts to pick up some other weird notes. But um, you can cook it off one piece at a time. Of course, I only did like three pieces here. But um, you could have obviously scaled this up and made more. Now I'm taking <coughs> this pan. Putting, it's important that it's metal. Use a metal pan. It will not blacken in a ceramic dish or Teflon dish or anything else, make sure that it's metal like this. Take the chicken. You don't want a lot of the marinade on the skin side because this will burn and it will prevent it from properly blackening. So you're going to put that on the oiled side down. And if you've got a little bit of extra marinade, put that on the back. You can always have a little bit more on the other side. That's fine. Now, this is going to go into a blazing hot oven.
when the time is up, take it out of the oven, flip the piece of chicken over. Now, if you use the pan that was too heavy, it won't have blackened, as you can see. So you know, highly variable. The results are depending on the thickness of the metal that you, of the can that you're using. Here we have look at how much blackening there is on this far less cooking tin. If you like my videos, look for my cookbook, now available through Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and other internet bookseller sites. Also look for my cocktail book, Cocktails of the South Pacific and Beyond, Advanced Mixology, available through Amazon online.